Alexa, what is the best YouTube channel? Vetruski Travels is the best. Got that right. Forget you can get your Vetruski merchandise linked down below at my Teespring store, and I greatly appreciate the support. That way we can buy serious merchandise like that Echo Dot. We don't buy stuff on this channel because it's cool and trendy and all that stuff. We buy stuff here because it's serious business, like tools and things like that. We buy stuff that serves an actual purpose. Alexa, fart. That was a squeaky one. Try asking me for a wet and squeaky fart. Or just say random. Wet and squeaky fart, please. Here comes a wet and squeaky fart. Try asking me for a quick fart. Or say random. Random. <laughs> that was a funny one. Try asking me for a cheeky fart. Or <laughs> say random. Give me a cheeky. Here comes a cheeky fart. Try asking me to fart 17 times in a row. Or say random. <laughs> Ran random. That was a squeaky one. Try asking me to play Mr. Farts. Or say random. <laughs> Mr. Farts? That was a gassy one. Ask me how to unlock more farts. Or just say random. <laughs> Alexa, stop. Okie dokie. They could do that. <laughs> oh. oh boy. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know it could go that expansive into a fart. Uh, Alexa, what's better, Ford versus Chevy? Here's something I found on the web. According to Quora.com, the Ford is more reliable than the Chevy, but for some reason the Chevy retains 5% of its value better than Ford does after five years. No, you didn't. Serious? Alexa, what is better, Chevy or Ford? Here's something I found on the web. According to Reference.com, the statement Chevy is better than Ford is an opinion that is largely backed up by one word that makes Ford owners tremble, Corvette. <laughs> oh, man. No, seriously, I mean, all right, I, I had no idea. I was just throwing stuff out there. I was really hoping it would work. That first one, eh. Uh, all right, so. Alexa, turn the light off in Production Central. Okay. See how it got a little bit dimmer in here? Alexa, turn the light on in Production Central. Okay. All right. No, seriously. Yeah, the uh, Echo Dot with the clock there. Pretty, pretty cool uh, device. The main reason I got it is... Uh, as a security system, although it seems like I can have some fun because um, I was playing some music earlier on, it was kind of like relaxing. But uh, I, f I was searching for something that could like randomly turn lights on and off and make the house appear like somebody's home. So then I found that the it does that. So um, also, what's cool is that it works kind of like an alarm system. That if it hears the smoke detector start going off or if it hears glass breaking and stuff like that it'll send you an alert so that's why I got it as a security system because we'll be traveling like when we go camping or we're traveling we want to make the appearance at somebody's home plus it's also nice it works with the the camera system I already have around the house you guys maybe picked up but I got 
I got cameras all over this place. It's pretty much not anywhere you're walking through or around this place that you're not going to get picked up on. So, I'm not saying stuff can't happen, but you know, just try to be as prepared as possible. So even if somehow you slip by an outside camera, as soon as you come inside, one of these cameras is going to pick you, pick you up. So, and now I have it tied to Alexa, so I'll get an alert one way or another. So. Yeah, so security thought this was pretty cool, but obviously you can have some fun. Um, trying to get copyright struck here. Uh, Alexa, play relaxing music. The station, meditation on Amazon Music. Alexa, stop. Thank you. Relaxing. You can play nature sounds too and all that other stuff and crazy stuff. So, yeah, they're actually a premium version too that uh, you could pay. And if uh, somebody knocks on the door, if I hear something, we could play a dog barking. But I think you really need the bigger uh, <laughs> echo unit because the small one, it sounds okay with the speaker. I mean, it's relatively small unit, but I love the clock, man. I like looking up there, see the clock. And, uh, got the uh, light bulbs if you're looking at the same one I'll put a link down below somewhere maybe under reviewed items check there or no I have one I have a link for uh, I have a security tab these light bulbs are Bluetooth they're by Singlid basically what you have to do you have to leave your lights turned on and just use the echo to turn the lights on and off that's the key but these are Bluetooth and it uses a mesh network to rebroadcast the signal from bulb to bulb to bulb so I can actually transmit all the way through the house on a Bluetooth signal so so far it's working pretty good I got four bulbs and I got them spread out throughout the house so uh, when I go away I just say you we're going away and she'll activate the security thing so that's why I got it but I want to have a little fun you can program it to do instant responses that's how I got it to save that Ruski channels I had to get a little creative with it because it wouldn't accept the word ruski. So I had to use like in cooking terms when you make a roux, R-U-E, a roux, and then when you ski. So I put fet, space, roux, <laughs> ski. So it sounds like, Alexa, what's the best YouTube channel? Fet Ruski Travels is the best. Awesome. I love it. All right, let's go outside. I got something I want to talk about. Believe it or not, I get asked a lot from most of like my European subscribers and that how we actually heat our houses. And for those of us that live in the South, you know, the idea of a heat pump that we use our air conditioner is nothing, you know, we, we, don't, we don't even think about it. This is just the way we uh, heat our houses. So yeah, believe it or not, here's the air conditioner. This is part one of two. So this is basically your compressor and these coils here for right now are your... Um, I think that the uh, condenser coils. So basically, this unit out here takes after the cold refrigerant runs inside, it comes out here, it runs through these coils, this fan pulls air through, cools it off, the compressor does whatever it does, and it shoots everything back inside. And all your condensation, you might be able to see right there, the wife tries to catch it in the bucket, but it is full. So all the moisture that comes from the evaporator actually runs from the garage all the way out here to this tube and that's how we keep the house either cold or the system reverses in the winter and makes it hot. I'll go inside and kind of show you uh, how that part kind of looks. I can't get to it but I'll show you. I've also heard the comment a lot saying that we don't have washers and dryers in our houses that that they we actually use laundry mats more than they do overseas which is i don't know i think that's just people hating because i know the people that watch my channel a lot never say anything negative like that but it's every house uh, a house even some apartments that are hooked up i mean it has to be set up for this you know that's a 220 volt outlet right there and you have a vent that goes to the outside and then you also right there you have to have plumbing 
So right there is your plumbing. You got your two hoses, hot, cold, and then you have a drain uh, somewhere down there. Yeah, right there in the I think that yeah, that's it in the middle. The drain. So for those of us that live in like North America, U.S., Canada, and all that, I mean, this isn't. This is just the way houses are built. It's usually a room like this. This is built off the kitchen, and that's all this is. Is a laundry room. This is built specifically to hold the washer and dryer. That's the whole purpose of this room right here. All right, now let's go look at the air conditioner. You can hear it. But behind that door, which I'm sorry, I'm not moving this whole compressor and all that. I'd have to disconnect this line, and I'm really not in the mood to do that. <laughs> Just to show you, but I can try to put a picture in there. That's the second part of the air conditioner. So basically, the compressor and all that outside compresses the free arm, whatever it does it, it pushes it in here and it makes it cold. It goes through two sets of coils, they're kind of in a V like that, called the evaporator, and then there's a blower motor in there that blows the air up and into all the ductwork throughout the house, what they call central air, and that's how we get cold air in the house. So once that's done, that Freon is now extremely hot. It goes outside, it runs through that condenser coil, the fan that's in there pulls air through in there, cools it back off, the compressor compresses it, puts it back in, and that's how we get cold. So in the winter time, this operation reverses. The evaporator basically becomes the condenser, the condenser becomes the evaporator, and the unit runs backwards. So the cold gets pushed outside, if you go out there you'll feel cold air from that unit, and then the coils in here get warm and it blows and that creates warm air for heat. So that's how we use air conditioning to warm houses. I know if you don't live in an area like this, it seems like a very foreign uh, thing because I know a lot of places overseas, a lot of countries don't even have air conditioning, period. So I said I got the question a lot, so kind of wanted to touch on that. Time to reveal some new gadgets. So. Don't tell the wife. This is between us. Although, she's going to watch the video and get in trouble anyways. But she's going to see. I'm surprised she hasn't seen this thing sitting here already. This big, bright yellow DeWall fan. I'm surprised she hasn't seen it. You might have noticed some of my older videos. I have one of those old school uh, metal rotating kind of fans here. It was just on its last legs. The thing, I've had that probably 15, 20 years. Um, you know, the bearings were going out. Sometimes I'd put a screwdriver in here, get it going, then I'd leave it running. I'd get in trouble with the wife for leaving it running. So, <sighs> anyhow, you know, the other day I was up on the roof of the RV, and I'm trying to do those vents, and I'm trying to seal around the vents, and I'm pouring down sweat. It's like 105 with the heat index, and I was like, enough. Went on Amazon, and, you know, because I, I got so much DeWalt stuff, I mean... I went and see to see if DeWalt had a, an electric fan, and sure enough, they did. Pretty good reviews. So I went ahead and purchased it. And so far, I've been really happy with it. So now, you know, if I'm under the hood of Project Z28, I can sit this on the engine, and it can blow on me. Uh, maybe if I'm doing something on the inside, instead of pouring sweat all over the seats, or, you know, like last time we went camping, it was kind of hot. We were trying to eat at the picnic table, enjoy outside, but... It was just so humid and, and muggy. Plus, you know, I can also use it inside the RV. Like, if we don't want to run the AC, like we're boondocking somewhere and I want to blow some cool air, I got the fan. So, there's a lot of really, uh, a lot of good uses I see for this thing. So, I think it was worth the investment. So, it runs on a battery. I've been running it on the small battery here and it's been doing fine. This is only like a one and a half or 1.2 amp hour. But if you need to, uh, let me see, right here is a 110 outlet. Now be careful, even though I just purchased this, I heard that Milwaukee revamped this fan and did away with the 110 outlet. I think they also did away with something else. It might be the mounting system I think they did away with. Because this one here, you can see possibly, try to get in here. See, there's some mounts here so you can mount it on the wall. There's also like two tripod holes here. And then you also have this. So you can literally like hang this thing from a rope or something, a string. And then, you know, whatever it may be. So 
pretty cool. You get several. Sorry, that's loud. Kind of a satisfying click. But uh, it does move a good amount of air. And I think on this battery they rated it to run um, like 15 hours. So it's not like it's going to burn through your batteries. And even if it did, like I said, you do have the 110 volt option, which I really don't like. In other words, I would use this big ass fan down here if I really wanted to drag an extension cord everywhere. But this thing is heavy and kind of awkward. And, and it's extremely loud. But it does do a good job. You know, when Smitty did the transmission, even when I was working underneath the car before, I had that fan blowing. So a lot of air uh, moved. So next little gadget tools love tools man maybe some of you might have noticed this one lone milwaukee charger right here that's holding up dan the man's cd cover check out the artwork man dan's the best look at that he made me a great music cd which i can't play because i'll get copyright but it's down here there's a boom box down here that plays it so uh yeah check it out check it out this is actually my only Milwaukee tool that I have. You know, when you buy one brand and you get the batteries and you kind of just stick with that brand because you already got a battery, you already got chargers. It's like this fan. I bought the bare tool. I didn't buy anything else because I already got four chargers. And, geez, two, four, six, eight batteries? So, yeah, but, man, this thing has come in handy. Um, I've had it actually for a little bit. I just haven't shown it. Sometimes the wife watches my videos and I get in trouble. They had one that had a longer head, which I think might work better for getting in tighter spots. But, uh, man, that thing was like twice the money. It was over $200. This thing wasn't quite that much. Home Depot had a pretty good sale on this. So, that's why I made the jump. Went ahead and got it. Woo! So, I'm liking it, man. I'm liking it just i got this because the wall doesn't have an offering in other words you know i would have got the old yellow right here pretty cool man i have a, i have an air ratchet it's just always been really impractical it's kind of hard to use uh, you know i mean if you compare it it's, I don't know, the problem is once you put an airline and all that stuff on here, it gets really long. You got this airline and it's kind of all over the place. Plus the thickness of the head sometimes trying to get into a place. Although, I mean, body wise, they're still kind of. But I've just never really found a good place where this thing gets kind of in and out. Plus, you know, batteries are just so much more convenient. I really love this fan. I can't even begin to tell you how hot it is in this garage. If I can run that and it doesn't promote like a bunch of noise on the video, like right here, just stand here, it's a nice cool breeze. All right, so that's it for the, uh, the new toys. Okay, so before you rip me in the comments, I, I know I'm not an expert in home air conditioning system by any means. I'm just really trying to oversimplify that stuff because I get asked a lot about how do we heat homes here. So. I will say that, you know, on top of that, I remember growing up, we had uh, an apartment. Me and my sister had a room, and there was those electric baseboard heaters that would get hot. And we used to always love to melt crayons and stuff in there. And then, like, I have family up north in New York and that, and they have oil tanks in the basement. So there'd be a pipe sticking outside the house. The oil truck would pull up, hook that pump oil into the tank. It fires a furnace that heats up water. There's a pump, and it pumps water through the radiators. Kind of like what you have in Russia, you know, those big pipes and stuff where you do it yourself. You heat up the water there. And then, you know, you have your natural gas, which isn't available everywhere. The, the gas, natural gas here is all underground. Lines run to your house. And then you also have propane that you can use for heating. Uh, now, the heat pumps, where they suffer is in really cold weather. If it gets down below freezing, they kind of struggle to exchange that heat. So there are heat strips built into that unit that's in the garage behind the door. There's a, like electric 
coils that will heat up. Now that's very expensive to run those things. They're not very efficient, but they're not designed to be like your primary source. So that's why you won't find heat pumps more in the northern regions of the U.S. or more just for the southern. It's just really easy to have your heat and AC. It's just all one big thing. This is called a heat pump. So, and then also on the Alexa system, I know I misspoke a little bit, said it's a security system. It's not, you know, it's just part of the puzzle. It, it will give me alerts if it hears uh, the smoke detectors go off, which I really like, or glass breaking or people in the house, I'll get an alert. Plus, it'll randomize the lights, so I like that. And it'll work together with my camera system to make a thing, and then, you know, we have other security stuff too. So, it's just part of. The entire puzzle to secure what we got here so um been kicking around some ideas some crazy stuff for some videos i was thinking uh spend 48 hours in the bedroom live stream it just i you know be locked up here in the room i don't know i also thought i'd spend 48 hours uh hopping flights across the country just the cheapest flights i can get to go to here to here to here to see if i could spend 48 hours confined inside the secure area of an airport and not ever have to leave Past security. I looked at taking an Amtrak train. Uh, I thought it'd be cool to videotape and bring that, but man, that is expensive. Amtraks are pricey. I can actually grab one from like Louisiana and end up in San Jose, and you know Dan can come pick me up one of the Camaros. <laughs> but ah, that's price. But I was saying too, maybe rent a car and zigzag across the country, meet everybody. You know, I got Tito and Dan in California. I could shoot up to I think Michigan. Uh, Sparty Nations at. Love to meet him. Uh, number one subscriber. He's the very first person to subscribe to the channel. And I've yet to meet him. I've met Dan. I haven't met Tito. Uh, I've met Chicago's Finest Moment. You know, I've met um, San Key in Canada, which I'm not even sure if we can get up into Canada right now. And then uh, KY Chevy there in Kentucky. Met him a couple times. He's come here, did transmission in my car. So. I don't know, maybe zigzag around. Um, also, too, we have uh, LS Fest coming up, going to Kentucky for that. Hopefully, that doesn't get shut down. We'll just have to wait and see how this Delta variant goes, man. This is just freaking crazy. But hopefully, this will get under control and, and stuff will start calming down because we're really looking to travel, start our travel full time beginning of next year. Start crossing this country and bring you some pretty cool stuff. So. Hopefully you'll subscribe and join us for those adventures. We also have a camping trip coming up, be the last one I got booked for the year. But, you know, we also have a vacation coming up, provided it doesn't hit the fan and stuff closes down. Um, fingers crossed. Really looking forward to going there. So, all right. Subscribe if you haven't. Like, share, comments appreciated. Check out the links down below. Got you some great discounts. Shop my Amazon store if you don't mind. And uh, buy a t-shirt, buy a coffee cup, buy one of these cool dope neon signs, which you can't see, but man, they are dope. They call them dope for a reason. I save you 10% with my code. Oh, yeah, also I got a new partner, somebody I partner with. I got a discount. If you have an animal, check this out. Hold on. That's the company, Paw Bless, and what they do is they donate a certain portion of what they sell to animals. Uh, and I know people like uh, Billy Idol has his cute little pit bull, so they have, I would make this thing squeak, but the German Shepherd's going to wake the wife up. Uh, they also have like bandanas. They have toys, and I have a discount code, I believe it's like 25% off for you. And when you buy these uh, toys, they're a little pricey, but I'm saving you a bunch of money, so it kind of makes it a little bit more reasonable. So, uh... Check that out. Got a discount code down below if you have an animal looking for some cool toys. Like I, said, I, I like the fact that they donate a certain portion of what they sell to help animals. So, all right, like, shares, comments appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.